After my last video, a few people thought that the torsion box wasn't really necessary, but in this demonstration, you can see the flex in the panel over the required span for both the torsion box and a plain sheet of 3 quarter inch birch ply. The single sheet of ply was sagging under its own weight before I even stood on it. As with a lot of the kitchen, I started by ripping some large sheets of 3 quarter inch melamine faced birch ply down to rough dimensions for the side panels using my circular saw. I then cut the panels to final size at the table saw. In total, there were four 680 by 665 millimeter panels and one 580 by 665 millimeter panel for the narrow end of the unit. Whilst I was at the table saw, I also ripped a 100 millimeter wide strip, which I will later cut down to create the top frame, which supports the quartz worktop. With all the parts cut to size, I can begin assembly, but I would also like to take this opportunity to thank Matt Cremona and Jay for sharing my content and welcome all my new viewers. I hope you enjoy my videos and sorry for the delay. I've been away on holiday or vacation for the last two weeks. I started by cutting dados to accept the upright panels. I did this with my router and the exact width dado jig using a half inch straight bit and a 16 mm template guide. The dado is set to three millimeters deep and I got the depth by placing a three mm drill bit under the depth stop with the bit sitting flush on the surface. For the 680 mm long dados, my jig wasn't quite long enough so it left a round end on the dado. I cleaned this up with a chisel so that the panel would fit in. To account for slight variances in the width of the panels, I placed them in the dados and flushed the front edge with the front of the torsion box. Then, referencing off the back edge of the torsion box, I made a mark on both the panel and the top of the base, at 32mm in from the edge. This marks the front edge of the dado for the back panels. With an edge guide, I could then rotate the bits so that the two cutting edges were perpendicular to the edge of the base, then line up one side of the bit with my pencil mark. I used the same approach for each of the side panels, this way the front of the unit would definitely be flush with the face frame. I just adjusted the edge guide for each panel. The middle three panels had a back panel on either side so they received two dados, while the outer panels just received one. The middle three panels will be held in place with screws from below, so I drilled holes through the bottom of the dado since that was easier than calculating the location from below. I then had to remove all the screws so I could remove the bottom skin of the torsion box. With this done, I could flip it back over and clamp the panels in place, then screw them in from below. This was a little awkward since it required me to lie on my back on the dusty floor to get underneath the box. Moving on to the back panels, I rough cut them from half inch melamine face ply and trimmed them to size on the table saw. I installed the panels using clamps to ensure that they seated properly in their dados. To install the outer two panels, I couldn't screw them in from below since they sat over top of the edge piece of the torsion box. So I put three pocket screws in each panel. These are on the outside of the unit, so they'll be completely hidden by the trim. Coming back to the top frame, I cut the 100mm wide strip to length using the circular saw, leaving roughly 5mm to spare on each piece. I could then take them to the table saw and use the mitre gauge to cut them to size, checking the fit between cuts. Each section received two pocket holes at either end and pocket holes along one edge to tie them into the back panel or face frame. So here's the finished unit for the sink side of the kitchen. As you can see, we've got a cupboard here, we've got a pull up larder, we've got the sink where I'm sitting with cupboard underneath, and then another pull up larder on the end. Dishwasher will go off to the end there, but that'll be a separate unit, so that's not included. Now as you can see, it's holding my weight just fine, supported by a chair either end. The movements from the chairs, not from the actual unit itself. And it needs to be able to hold this weight because just on this unit alone where I'm sitting, we're going to have a 50 kilo ceramic sink at the front. I've covered underneath full of stuff. The sink is 50 kilos on its own, once it's full of water, it could be 70, 80 kilos, uh, which is about what I weigh. So. Looks like it can take that, and even if I stand on these two side pieces here, which is where the load will be, that's not a problem for the unit. 
So next up will be face frame to go around the front. I've already shown the cutting of the parts for that, so the next part will be to screw that all together and get it in place. Until next time, thanks for watching. Don't know how I'm going to get this off the chair as it weighs a lot. A lot more than it was when I put it on here.